<laughs> Ilki. Ilki, I need you to stop yawning. What's up you guys, Raif Darazi here, and I have some good news, finally, on my end, I've been keeping you updated on my health, and two days ago, I received a text from LA County saying that they're setting up new testing sites for those of us who are looking to get tests, and so I signed up for that, and I was able to go get an appointment for noon yesterday at a new testing site, and I decided to get ready and get there early because I didn't know what the turnout was gonna be like, if it was gonna be swamped with all these new people wanting to get tests or what. So I ended up getting there a half hour early at like 11.30, and um, it was just a line of cars. I was probably the 10th or 11th person in line in my car, and um, that's when I realized, oh, it's gonna be one of those drive-through testing facilities. So I'm sitting there, I'm there early, you know, I've got NPR turned on, listening to a little bit of the news, and uh, as I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh man, like, I have to go to the bathroom. You know, I drank two cups of coffee before I came, and you know, I just didn't account for the fact that I probably have to go, go pee. You know, there's cop cars parked around, and there's some cops standing around, and there's people like moving in and out, moving supplies to this little tent area where I guess they're keeping all the stuff. They're still getting set up. The introvert in me was like, I don't, I just really don't want to be the first one to get out of my car, I got my mask on, and like leave my car parked in this line of cars, and then like walking over to like the official testing area, and ha I have to cross into that area in order to use the one part porta potty that's standing there. <laughs> I just don't want people to look at me, I got my mask on, like everybody, it's too early for all this. I was just like, come on Rafe, if you gotta use the restroom, go use the restroom. Like, quit being neurotic about this. Just get up out of your car, go over there, get it done, and then you get back and then it's over. And you'll be that person for everybody else who's also like hesitating to get out of their cars. And you'll, you'll like kind of set that and then people will feel free to use the restroom if they need to and there's this weird social pressure thing going on that I've created in my head. So I, I got my mask on, my wipes, my keys, and I get to the porta potty, do my business. But the thing is, the the seat wouldn't stay up on its own. And I didn't want to be, you know, lazy and just let the seat go down and pee and then get like stuff on the seat. Although I could have wiped it afterwards now that I think about it. But anyway, I wasn't thinking like that. I'm like, I'm just gonna be courteous and try to hold the seat up while I, while I go to the bathroom. And so while I'm doing that, I'm using one hand to kind of like hold the seat up. And then I've got the other hand, you know, trying to like get things going. And while I'm doing that, I didn't realize subconsciously while I was getting ready and like moving over to the porta potty that I had put my car key. It's just this little piece of plastic and the key retracts into it. So it's just this little like round piece of plastic in my hoodie pocket, you know, the ones where like it connects where if you put your hands in, you can like hold your own hands. It's one of those pockets in my sweatshirt. I've got it in there and because I'm leaning a little bit holding the toilet seat up, as I'm peeing, I hear a clunk. I was like, oh my God. And I realized in that moment that my key had slid out of the pocket and fell into the porta potty liquid. So, but here's the thing that I realized instantly as I heard, this is all happening within the span of like five to 10 seconds. I'm having all these thoughts. So I'm like, oh my God, I just finished peeing. I realized that the clunk, I heard the clunk sound and then I heard another dunk sound of it hitting the bottom of the porta potty. And that was like really quickly after I heard the clunk of it hitting the liquid. I knew that it was very shallow. Like it had to be shallow. I was telling myself, okay, it's shallow. But then I was like, what if it's not? I'm like, either way, I have to get my key. Like if I don't get my key, I can't get in my car, and my car's in the middle of this long line of people waiting to get a drive through test, and I won't even be able to move the car or do anything with it, and it'll create a huge hassle, and not to mention my own day will be effed. Immediately, I was like, you have to do it, Rafe. You have to do it, you have to do it, you have to do it. Go, go now. So instantly, like without thinking, I just stuck my hand into the liquid, immediately touched the key, and pulled it out. I only went down into the liquid, like maybe up to my wrist. That's as deep as it was. And fortunately, it was the beginning of the day, so I think the thing was like, you know, pretty freshly cleaned. No one had pooed in there yet. It was just whatever else. I don't want to think about it. And so my hand is covered in this blue liquid, and I have the key soaked too. And I just I'm grabbing tons of toilet paper and patting it down as much as I can to try to get as much of it off first. Do that, and there's a little dispenser with sanitizer. So I'm grabbing that, it's foaming sanitizer, and I've got it all over my hand, and I'm like foaming the key and then I'm grabbing more toilet paper and like I've got blue toilet paper clumps like falling all over me and like <sighs> so that's how it started
that's how my morning started before this test. Sanitizer and toilet paper and dabbing down and everything and I was like completely frazzled and I was like, okay, get yourself together and let's go back out to my car. I don't know, I don't know. At this point I was just like, I just wanna get back to my car. I grabbed my stuff, got my keys, I'm in my car, I'm situated, I'm just telling myself, okay, this could have been way worse. That pool and that porta potty could have been like that normal, like really deep pool that's like five, six feet deep. And then I would have been just rude to think about that. I would not have been able to get my key back. I would have needed a professional to come out and drain the damn thing or get some sort of tool or something to get it out. And my car would have been stuck there all day and just so gross. Anyway, so I was really, really thankful that that thing was only like six inches deep or whatever it was. I was able to get my key and it worked. Got back to my car, was in my car, ready for this drive through thing to happen so I can get home and shower and not think about this anymore. Okay, so now, getting ready for the testing. Cars are starting to go through the little testing thing. Cars in front of me, turning their lights on, turning their engines on. I'm ready to go, all right, let's go. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, okay, no, no, <laughs> this isn't happening right now. Okay, tick, 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 tick. And I was like, oh my God. My battery is dead. I don't know how or why. Maybe it's because I haven't driven it in like a couple weeks or I've only driven it to go to the grocery store really quickly and now my battery is just, it's dead, it's drained. And I've got, now I've got people in the line behind me. Remember, I was like 10th in line. So now I've got people behind me and they're starting to honk and be like, let's go. And I'm looking to the side, the cops are right there and they're looking at me and they're like, go, go, go. And I'm like showing them my key. I was like, ah, <laughs> why? Why? Two cops come over and they're, and they're like, is your battery dead? Like you can't start the car? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, ugh, okay. So they're like, roll up your windows, put your car in neutral. And they push my car until I can go to the side next to the curb. And I just, and then they walk away and I'm just left there just feeling defeated as this line of people are going and getting tested and moving, moving about with their day. And thankfully I have AAA. I call the AAA guy. He eventually comes out. Fortunately, he's able to jump start my car and I get going and I move right back into the line. And this is after everybody in line has basically gone at this point. It's an hour, hour and a half later, it's pretty much over for that appointment in time. And I'm coming in at the end. And I decided I wanted to video record it because a lot of people out there haven't had the chance to get tested yet. And as this thing, this coronavirus really ramps up in the next few weeks, more people are gonna be getting ready to get tested. And I'm sure there's a lot of you who are um, just wondering what that process is like. And I think it's interesting. So I wanted to share it. So anyway, here, I'll show you the video of what I went through. Hey. Hello. Last four of the number. Oh. 204. And your last name, sir? Durazi. Durazi? With a D. Durazi. Here's, Thank you. Here's your, your kit inside yes, of the instructions, okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, they're easy to follow. Just make sure that when you open up the test tube, leave it vertical don't, so you don't spill out all the liquid, okay? Okay. Follow the cones, there's another guy in a white suit that's going to direct you which lane to go into, okay? Okay, great. When you stop the vehicle, make sure you stop five feet behind the car in front of you. Parking brake is on. Okay. Okay? Do not exit the vehicle. And when you leave this area, make sure to roll all your windows. If you have any problems with the instructions, they'll help you down at the end, okay? Okay. So here's the kit that they gave me. I'm gonna open it up and see what's inside. I don't have a free hand, so I'm gonna have to show you after I open it. Filling out a form with my personal info. So the form is pulled out. Put that back in the box. Peel open the swab package. B. Okay, swab package. Rub the swab inside your mouth on the left cheek. Right cheek and roof of mouth. Okay, unscrew the lid of the tube C. This is it, tube C. Unscrewing and insert the swab B with the saliva sample into the tube. So, all right, put it in part for me. Okay. 
perfect. Now you're gonna just twist it back and forth to break it off. Okay. That's the hardest part today. I don't know why it's not working. There you go. There we go. All right. All right. So now you seal that lid on there. Okay. Okay. Light little shake for me. One. Perfect. That goes in the biohazard bag. Yep. That goes in the bubble wrap bag. Perfect. See it? Yeah. Uh, oh wait. I'm, I'm, all right. All right. Now that goes in the box. Okay. All right. And then seal the box. If you filled out the paper, great. If you didn't, it's not. It's yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Throw that in there. Okay. Now you're gonna go ahead and high board and drop it in. Okay. No pressure, but no one's there. Cool. All right, dude. Have a good day. Hey, uh, results in 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. They'll call you if you're positive. If you're negative, they're gonna email you. Okay, okay great. Thank right. you. Have a good day. You too. And that's that. 24 to 48 hours, that's awesome. That's a huge improvement from what it was. That was it. That was the entire drive-through testing experience. It was really easy. It was cool that they could just give you a little kit, had instructions. I could do it all myself really quickly and I had someone who was um, humorously and kindly speaking to me from through my window, six feet distance. And then after that was done, they had like this little, it kind of basically looked like a trash can with some plastic in it where I could toss the box and then ships off to wherever, then I will be getting the test results within 24 to 48 hours. Right now, as I'm recording this, it's 24 hours after, so within the next 24 hours, I should have a response, and I'll be sure to uh, update you guys with what the results are of my COVID-19 test. All right, cheers. Uh, good luck to all of you. I hope you're all staying safe, and I hope those of you who need a test are able to get one in the near future. If you like this video, like it, subscribe if you haven't already. I've got a lot more content coming for you. All right, peace.